Welcome to the Get Published Podcast, sponsored by Birdie Consulting Group. To get more information about our coaching, publishing, executive ghostwriting, and podcast production services, go to getpublishedpodcast.com. Hello, I am Paul Birdie, and thank you for joining us for another episode of the Get Published Podcast, where we help authors get published with a proven system that works. Today, we're being joined by Michael Boothby, author of Message with Purpose, Swipe Dating Simplified. Michael, welcome to the show. Hey, Paul. How you doing, man? Always a pleasure, my friend. And just in full disclosure to our audience, Michael is a client of mine. We've been working together for a few months now, and we're in the process of launching his book. So how you feeling about that launch so far, Michael? Man, uh, honestly, it's I, I'm the busiest I've ever been in my life, but I'm having so much fun, man. <laughs> hey, busy is a good problem to have. So I'm thrilled to have you on the show. Are you ready to get started with our questions? Let's do it. All right, my friend. Question number one. What is the one piece of advice that you would give to a first-time author who is currently writing in their book? I would say... First of all, get some of your friends who are either also writers or creatives or um, honestly anyone who you trust and, and send them drafts of what you're working on and ask for honest feedback. You know, you because without, you know, honestly, I did I did my book. I didn't even hire an editor for this because I sent I essentially crowdsourced my editing because um, along the whole way I was just sending chapters um, to my friends and just getting feedback. Like, what do you like? What do you not like? And I think, honestly, I mean, I'll, I definitely would recommend hiring an editor. I, I'm I'm a writer myself. You know, I've been writing since high school. I studied history. Um, one of my professors told me that I was uh, the best writer, actually, she, she had ever had as a student. And actually, I met up with her. I just moved back to Gainesville, University of Florida. And, and this is this is such a humble brag, but, you know, why not? Um, but she told me, you know, I took her class in 2012. I was a sophomore. Um, and I wrote a paper that got published in the University of Florida Undergraduate History Journal about – it was called Let's Go Raided Girls Dorm. <laughs> Panty Raids at the University of Florida in the 1950s. <laughs> And it's funny, though, because during that class, we actually um, – we did this project um, based off of Alfred Kinsey, you know, the Kinsey oh, yeah. um, Sex Research Institute. And we, everyone in the class, we took an anonymous survey um, kind of analyzing our sexual habits and behavior. And that's where I actually got my experience. And I used that experience in my book because my book, Message with Purpose, obviously it's based on my dating experiences and then combining that with my knowledge and passion for stand-up comedy, improvisational theater, and working in sales. But I also, when I was coming up with the blueprint um, for people to follow for messaging, um, I conducted an anonymous survey. And I, and without that class, I would not have known how to do it. And I used SurveyMonkey, and I sent it out to friends and friends of friends on Facebook, men and women, just to see. I'm like, okay, what I'm doing is working for me. Can this work for anybody? And that's what chapter three is all about. The messaging part of the book is I literally just quote um, the, the, uh, the statistics, the answers from my survey. So obviously I'm not a Harvard sociologist, <laughs> but you know, I, I don't know if there's any other dating coaches out there who are writing books while also doing surveys and getting real data out there to support their conclusions. Well, the other thing I like with your book too is the fact that you do use a lot of storytelling. And as, as you and I have yes. talked about in the past, one of the biggest things is sharing your story and your journey. So I love the fact that you've connected that with all this information, with the surveys, with the results, with the statistics to back up what you're saying, and then weaving it with your story as well. Definitely, you know, and and I think storytelling is so powerful. I mean, if if you look at even like some of the biggest brands right now, or some of like you know the the, the best advertising campaigns, it's it's all storytelling, you know, yeah. because. Um, and we'll actually, we'll get into this when I get into like my favorite book, but it's, I think storytelling is so important. You know, I'm, I'm a big fan of, um, I study mythology. Um, I also, I study tarot. People don't know that about me. I'm actually a very spiritual person, which you might glean a little bit from the book, but it's definitely not a spiritual book. It's definitely a very practical, I would call it a comedic self-help book because it was, I was inspired when I was living in New Zealand after reading, um, Aziz Ansari wrote a book. 
um, called Modern Romance, and he wrote it with a Harvard sociologist. I think his name is Eric Klinenberg. And so I wish I had that for this book, you know, because they were doing focus groups all over the world. So they had a bunch of data, but I also used a lot. I used a lot of the data from um, OK Cupid founder. Um, I forget his name, uh, but he wrote a book called Dataclism, where he took all of the data from the users on OkCupid okay and said, like, here are some trends in online dating. So obviously, when I started writing the book, I really Tinder was like the main platform. Obviously, now there's Tinder, Bumble, Hinge, OkCupid, okay Plenty of Fish. There's so many swipe dating apps out there now. But back then, OkCupid okay was kind of the main one. So I used a lot of that data, and I used I talk about it in Chapter 2, um, when it comes to like building your bio and, and why is it important to stand out? Um, so I kind of took a lot of that data and just extrapolated it to swipe dating apps because at Tinder, they, they, they keep a lot of their data kind of wrapped up. But I also did some research online and found what I could um, on the Tinder data as well. Well, what do you feel is the hardest part about getting published? Oh, man. You know, I think it's like this is why I decided to work with you. It's like because I've never published a book before and I'm self-publishing. I don't have a publisher. I, I just not knowing what I'm doing. And I know even like that's why I wrote this book, because it's like when I started using Tinder and swipe dating apps, I had no idea what I was doing, um, which if you read the book and I talk about this in the intro in chapter one, like in the beginning, it's all trial and error. Like me and my best friend Walter were in college when Tinder just came out. And we would just write poems and raps to girls <laughs> because we we're like, what is this? And we were always we would freestyle rap together all the time. And so we would just write raps to girls and we, we started getting responses. And some people were like, oh, my God, that's so funny. Like, what are you up to? And we're like, wow, this is working. But then obviously the next step was like, well, this is working. But do we need to work this hard to get these results? And the answer was no, <laughs> of course not. All you have to do is shine a light on something. So I think when it comes to self-publishing, um, I viewed this as an investment because I, I knew the value that this book had and I knew the time and effort I put into it. And I said, you know, I don't just want to plop this on Amazon and just let it sit there. I really want to use this to launch a career as an author, as a speaker and as a coach, um, which is why I decided to work with you. And honestly, I would encourage anyone out there. Um, you know, you, you have free resources too. You have, a, I'm pretty sure, don't you have a, a, a get published book, which I would, I checked out. Um, I'm also like kind of using that as a guide for myself now, um, as I'm also working with you just to kind of get some more inspiration. So anyone who's looking to self publish, do your research. Cause you, there's a lot of free resources online. There's podcasts. Obviously this is one of them. There's YouTube channels. There's, there's whole websites about self publishing. And so if it's something that you want to do, if you want to write a book, whether it's fiction or nonfiction, just do your research and and just be ready and prepared so you have all the information so you can make your launch as successful as possible. Well, it was funny. We were talking before the show about how we met. And the yeah. story was <laughs> is that you connected with uh, Devin, who works with us. Yeah. And I was actually in Maui at the time. I was actually snorkeling off of Lanahi. <laughs> and Devin calls yeah. me. It's barely any phone reception. She goes, hey, I've had this amazing conversation. This super cool guy named Michael. He has this awesome <laughs> book. He wants to utilize it for his business. I'd really like for you guys to talk. I'm like, well, listen, I'm, I'm off the shores of Maui here. I'm in, in Lanahi. I just got done snorkeling. We should be back yeah. in about an hour and a half. Let's set up a call. I We should be back in Lahaina. Should be at the Hula Grill by that point. Uh, let's set it up. And then the funny thing is, we get back. We're at Hula Grill, which is one of all time favorite spots. Had lunch, was actually eating their famous hula pie. And then, boom, the yeah. phone rings. There's Devin on the call. <laughs> she introduces me to you. And I remember your first response is like, hold up, where are you? I'm like, I'm in Maui. I'm, I'm, having, a, I'm having a hula pie, a hula pie here. And he goes, and you're talking yeah. to me? It's like, hell yeah, man. It's like, I've heard about this great story and you're so passionate about it. I was yeah, like, yeah, yeah, let's do it. And then, you know, we talked about it. We talked about the business and how we focus on the back end with our clients. And we, we explained the whole process. And for yeah. the record, you, you had the book edited and formatted. Uh, you went mm -hmm. through uh, Matt Stone and his great company for his cover. And then hundredcovers.com. Yeah, highly yeah. recommend them. Yes. And, um, you know, we're going to help you with the marketing service. And I just mm -hmm. I had such a great chat with you. I was like, man, this guy's fired yeah. up. And then 40 <laughs> hours later, you know, the deal is done. 
and uh, we started the process. In fact, I actually designed um, the basis of your launch while I was in the condo in Maui, and it was so funny. Here we are a few months later, and we're getting this book cranked out, and it's exactly oh, yeah. how you wanted it to be, and that's the best part of oh, this. Yeah. Yeah, man, and yeah, and it was so funny too because uh, I don't I don't think I would have made that made that call if you know I was doing this leadership training out in Colorado and I was just hyped up on that and you know cause it was all about you know kind of overcoming your limitations, overcoming your blocks, and living in abundance and. I, you know, I'd been working on this book for three years, and honestly, like even even you know this is like you know I contacted you in May. Yep. You know, we we got the marketing plan together, and, and I'm I'll be upfront and honest, candid with everyone listening. Like my life fell apart in May. Like you know, yep. I was messaging you, I was like, Paul, can I get my money back? Oh my God! And you're like, I've already made the plan. Yeah. And man, because you know, I was focusing so much on this book and my dreams that I I kind of just like let my day to day life get 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 ahead of me, um, which I know me as an artist that's always been my challenge. But you know. I'm very lucky um, that, you know, I, I, I called my parents and, and I was like, you know, I, I need to restart. Like, you know, I was in Chicago for three years and I just I, I felt like in Chicago I was working so hard and just getting nothing back, you know, and that's frustrating. It's like I feel like that like kid in the cartoon who's getting held down by the bully and he's swinging his arms and getting nowhere. <laughs> like that's how I felt with my creativity. And yet since coming back to Gainesville or, or, or Florida, you know, I spent some time with my parents, spent some time up in Richmond with my sisters, with my nephew, and just was back in that energy. And it was just so good to be around family again. And then um, my friend Walter, who again was uh, my best friend who – um, I talked about earlier who we, we used to write raps together. We were roommates in college. He still works in Gainesville. A lot of my friends are in the digital marketing startup scene in Gainesville. So I decided to go back up there and man, since August, it's just like things are just happening, man. There's just, yep. I don't know. There's something, it's like a vortex in Gainesville, but there's so many beyond the university and the students. And I, a lot of my friends are still professors and I, I'm actually, one of them's paying me now. One of my history professors is paying me to help her with a presentation she's giving on US foreign policy in Japan. So it's like I'm now able to do all the all of these creative things that I, I could only dream of in Chicago, I, and I couldn't tell you why. But just being back in Florida, moving back to Gainesville, it's just been it's just been easy. Even you know, I guess this would be a good time to lead in like to the Adult Swim gig, <laughs> which that came out of nowhere. Well, and I want to touch on that in just a moment when we take a little deeper sure. dive into marketing. But so the funny thing with that is when you did reach out a few months ago and you say, "Hey, some things are going south. I'm going to need to <laughs> take, a, you know, take a break from this." What you didn't know yeah. is I called Devin and I'm going, "Hey, yeah. does, does this kid not realize he's got this great concept? <laughs> he's going to be in good shape." I said, "We're not going to sweat this." I said, "I guarantee yeah. you, by the end of the year, he's going to reach yeah. out to me out of the blue." I said, "It's probably going to be October or November, and he's going to be ready." And what happened? <laughs> what happened three weeks ago? You were right. It was right on the money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was literally like, "Hey, Paul, I sent you an email." I'm like, "I think the headline said something like, we need let's to talk. do this.'" <laughs> You're like, "Yeah, we need to talk." It was like, it was like we like broke up, and I'm like, "All right, no, let's do this." <laughs> well, and and that's what I explained to you at the time. I said, "This plan's already ready to go." So I said, "All I yeah. need is a week." to be able to get the things set and up for you. And that's all I needed. <laughs> yeah, and boom, and it happened. And then let's let's transition into that. So I'm going to ask you sure. a marketing question, and let's talk a little okay. bit about Adult Swim because that's going to be our episode hook. Yeah. So, Michael, oh, please awesome. share a marketing strategy that you have used in your book launch so far that has worked well. Yeah. So yeah, um, we'll talk about Adult Swim. So I um, earlier this year, you know, I decided I really wanted to go full time with my creative pursuit. So you know, for everyone who's listening, you know, obviously I'm I'm a writer. Um, obviously, I, I wrote this book, Message with Purpose, Swipe Dating Simplified. But you know, I'm also um, a stand-up comedian. I'm also a musician, and I'm I'm going to be releasing an EP and an album later, um, either later this year or early 2020. I'm also a poet. I also do sketch comedy and you know photography, videography. I, I I I've somehow become a Renaissance man. People used to tell me, Michael, you're a jack of all trades, master of none. But now I'm slowly becoming a apprentice to everything, which is great, you know. Um, but anyways, earlier this year, I decided to make an investment um, on the site Backstage.com, and they had a deal, it was like $99 um, for a year subscription. And if you don't know, Backstage.com is essentially a site for actors um, where um, casting directors will post um, gigs and, and jobs and also like kind of promotional work, and you can apply. And so I, I, I had some newsletters, and so about like two or three weeks ago, I went on there and I saw that AdultSwim.com, they had a show called Digicus. 
And I read the description. I was like, oh, my God, I have to go on the show. Because um, the whole concept of the show, which you can check out at adultswim.com slash digikiss. They have my episode up there. Um, they get two um, random people. And you go on a blind date. You go on a blind date for 30 minutes over Skype. And then throughout the, the episode, the host will kind of chime in and ask questions. But what I also didn't know, there's some dramatic irony happening, is there's also like a live chat feed going on the whole time. And the questions come from viewers who are watching. So all the questions that were being asked were from people who were watching, which I had no idea because I was just on Skype the whole time. But anyways, I was talking to them and I made this really funny intro video that was something like, uh, Oh, I was with my friend, my friend Erica, who ironically I met on on Bumble, <laughs> and she's she's also she's a social media manager, and she's also been helping me out with the book, and also helped me film my intro video, and she had a dog, and so I started out petting this dog, and I was kind of like, uh, what did I say? I was like, I guess what I'm looking for in a relationship is, and then the dog, I'm an improviser, so the dog ran away, and I said, I said, well, I guess like the relationship with my dog, you know, like I hope that if, you know, I just looking for someone who you're doing your thing and, you know, you can leave. But if you do leave and then the dog came up to me like, I hope you come back. And then the dog jumped on my lap and then left again. And it was, it was so funny. And I think they ended up editing it down. But uh, what was awesome about the show um, was that normally they have one like one girl who's like the main dater and then three guys will submit a video and the audience will pick which guy they want to go on the date. But because I told them, oh, I'm doing this book launch. It's all about swipe dating apps. They were like, all right, we got you. We're going to make you the main dater and then everyone's going to vote on three women. And I was like, oh, this is perfect. Um, and so that was when I reached back out to you because I said, well, I'm going on this show like about – you know, it's a digital marketing, it's online dating, like this was a perfect time to launch my book. And it just happened to be like a week before and you were like, all I need is a week. I'm like, it's perfect. Let's do it. Yep. So, <laughs> um, but also I'll say, I'll say also just to follow up with that, like after the launch, man, like I was so exhausted last year. I know I was messaging you talking. I was like, I was so exhausted like Wednesday uh, through Friday because I found them um, even actually before that, probably all last week, the most important thing that I did. And we talk about this. If you're self-publishing, you got to get those five star reviews up as quick as possible on, yeah. on that launch day. So and the best way to do that. And actually, I'm working with another co coaching company and they call the strategy. um ambassador list building and they use this to help people start an email list from scratch but you can also use this for for anything and essentially it, i was just on facebook probably messaging 50 to 100 people personally every day saying hey you know it's michael i'm publishing my book um would you mind would you want to read a free copy of it in exchange for a review and they would send me their email and I would send them the PDF and say, oh, and then just with very specific instructions, like, hey, please send your review back to me. I'd love to read it. And then here's the page where you'll be able to post it on Wednesday. And I probably sent out like hundreds of those messages. And, and it, but it would work because I ended up now, I think I have 19 really well-written, heartfelt, authentic five-star reviews on the page, which like if I was someone and I didn't know me and I didn't know my book and I read through those, I would probably want to buy it. Absolutely. In fact, one of the things that we tossed into just to give you a little extra boost was I like the reviews so much that we actually created an editorial review section. So you're able to see those top reviews right at the start of it to help with conversion because you really got some great reviews there. Yeah, man. I, I, I'm really lucky that I have a lot of friends who are also creatives, entrepreneurs and writers themselves. So yeah, I'm very I'm very lucky to have a really awesome support system. Well, speaking of books, I'd like to know what is your favorite book and what was the number one thing that you learned from it? Yeah, I would say, and it's funny because actually my oldest sister is a writer and, and she actually, she got, um, she studied journalism at Northwestern. She graduated, must, must have been like 1998 or 99 when I was much younger, but she's, you know, she worked for magazines. She's now a writing coach, um, a health coach. And you can actually, you'll stay tuned to um, 2020, her last book. Actually, I, don't, I, I think I can say this, but she's, she's actually wrote um, with Erin Brockovich. She wrote her next book. So it's going to be Erin Brockovich and Suzanne Boothby. So I'm, I'm not the only writer in creative in my family, but she, she's been out of all of the people in my family, just like my biggest inspiration. And she's always kind of been there for me. And I remember back in college, my senior year, I, I was working on my, my honors thesis for history. 
which was about David Bruce, who was the U.S. ambassador to France in the post-World War II period, which is – it was so boring. I hated it. <laughs> like I wish I picked any other topic. Um, but she handed me – we were I remember we were on the beach in, and we were in Cape Cod and she handed me this book. She said, I think this book would really help you out. And it was a paperback um, of The War of Art by uh, Stephen Pressfield. And it's an amazing book. He's an amazing writer. Um, he also worked with Sean Coyne, who also wrote another amazing book called The Story Grid, which is all about storytelling and script writing. Um, and I think they have a publishing company together. I don't remember the name of it, but you can, he has another book also called Nobody Wants to Read Your Shit, <laughs> why that is and what you can do about it, which is kind of a follow-up to the war of art. But, um, what the war of art told me is like his whole thesis is like, we're, we, we are all writers. We can all create. And we're all in this war. We're in this battle and the enemy is resistance with a capital R and man, I felt that like when I was writing my thesis every day I woke up, I was procrastinating. And, and honestly, it took me three years to publish this book. I finished the draft of this book like in probably March or April of, of 2016. Um, like honestly, the only things I really changed until now were like the introduction and conclusion, which changed as I used more dating apps because originally the book was only supposed to be about Tinder. And then I realized, wow, swipe dating is a whole thing. And then I was in a three-year monogamous relationship. So that changed a lot of my, um, I guess, my mm -hmm. philosophies and perspectives about what it means to be in a relationship and what it means to date. So I had to add some of that in as well. Um, but man, I, it's like I still feel it every day, the resistance, man. And I think, you know, even you saw me like back in May, my life fell apart. And I said, oh, I'm not a writer. I'm not an artist. Who cares? And when you are an artist, especially when you're not recognized, when you're a writer and, and you're not published. And I talked to so many people, especially in when I lived in Chicago, we hosted a show out of our basement called Live from Mom's Basement with a lot of local poets, uh, comedians, improvisers, musicians. And I was always amazed when you go up to a performer after a show and you're like, hey, that was an amazing performance because most people who are new to performing or even people who've done it for a while but are still at that amateur level they'll go oh you know it's hard for people to take a compliment or really accept the fact that they might be amazing and they might be great and that's something I struggled with and that's that's why I love The War of Art by Stephen Pressfield because that's what he told you he's like man I'm he he's now, he's now you know he's written probably seven New York Times best-selling books um what the legend of Bagger Vance was turned into a movie um, starring Matt Damon. Um, so it's like he's someone who made it, man, and he just kept hustling and hustling. He used to work in advertising, then got into script writing, and then, like, became a novelist. And, you know, he's probably, I think he's in his 40s or 50s now, but, you know, he's still fighting that war. He's like, every day I wake up and the resistance is there, and what do I do? I sit down and I do the work and I write. And he has another book, I think, called Going Pro. And I feel like that's what's happening now, like this past month, talking to you, working with you, getting this book out. I feel like I'm now finally like transcending that that point where I'm no longer an amateur. I'm getting up every day at 7 a.m. I'm putting the hours in. And that's really all you have to do is the work. And once you just do the writing, you start reaching out to people and you believe that you are a pro, that you are great. That's when it's all happening. And I'm experiencing it right now. Well, 80 percent of the game, as you know, is showing up and you're clearly doing exactly. That. Exactly, man. And, and it's, it's like anything, you know, being a bodybuilder. How do you get but you, you go to the gym. If you're a writer, you sit down and you write. But then you also got to learn all the marketing, which is not as sexy, but it's probably as important, if not more. And a lot of artists don't want to learn um, the marketing. Actually, another guy who actually I sent him my uh, free copy of my book, Jeff Goins. Um, which he has a website, I think it's goinswriter.com. And he was a huge influence on me as well because he had a book that I read in New Zealand called You Are a Writer, parentheses, so start acting like one. And man, that book kicked my ass. It made me, it really made me sit down every day to, 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 to pen out this book. Um, and then he came out, his newest book, um, I think it came out um, 2017, is called Real Artists Don't Starve. And it's a very well-researched book, and he has all these case studies of all these creatives and artists who have found ways to monetize their art and have multiple streams of income and become full-time artists. And he uses Michelangelo as kind of like the protagonist, and he goes back and talks about all these strategies that Michelangelo used way back in the day, the back in the Renaissance, to like to make money. And like I think one of the great stories that I remember is that Michelangelo once. Um, 
he made a perfect imitation, I think, of a statue um, and like sent it to the Pope. Um, and the Pope was like, wait a minute, you did this? And he was like, yeah. And he was like, honestly, it was like, it was like plagiarism. He did the same exact statue, but instead of getting offended, the Pope was like, this is perfect. How much money do you want? I'll be your patron. <laughs> and so it's like stuff like that. It's just like these creative approaches for creatives now. Cause now obviously like with the internet, it's, it's, it's possible to make money doing anything online. Um, so that book for me was also super inspiring, super eye opening, And I also recommend that to anybody else who's uh, trying to go full time with their, with their creativity. And for a final question, what is your favorite quote sure. and why? Okay. I love this question. My favorite quote is, um, I hope I don't butcher it. Um, it is no measure of health to be – oh, hold on. It is no measure of health to be well-adjusted to a society that is profoundly sick. And that's J. Krishnamurti, who was an – I'm pretty sure it was an Indian activist. And I love that because – People have been telling me my whole life, Michael, you're crazy. You're crazy. And I'm like, I, I don't think I'm crazy. I think our I think our, our culture is crazy. And I think all the social norms that we have are crazy. And I think that's something I'm constantly trying to battle with my art and with my writing. Even my book is like everyone has these preconceptions about what swipe dating apps are. Oh, it's for hookups. It's this. Oh, and they dismiss it. And I said, well, what if you approached it with a new paradigm? What if you opened your mind and, and, and used these swipe dating apps as in a neutral way and with an open mind and you just learned from everybody you interacted with? And so that's, I think that's, I love that quote because that's what I'm always trying to do. I, I look around and I see what's wrong with our culture and our society. And, but I'm not here to yell at people. I'm just here to be a guide for anyone who also has that inkling that maybe we can make a better world. Well, Michael, I want to thank you for being a guest on the show. What is the best way for people to find you online? <laughs> Sure. Um, yeah, I, I am pretty active on Instagram. Uh, my handle is at Michael Boothby Creative. Um, and I'm also really active on Facebook. Um, so obviously you can find my personal page at Michael Boothby. You can find my consulting um, and comedy at facebook.com slash Michael Boothby Creative. Uh, my music is facebook.com slash Michael Boothby music and then if you if you're a fan of the book and you enjoy it you can also um i made a page for the book so if you just go like if you type in facebook um message with purpose book you should find that and then i also recently i'm really excited about this um i created a facebook group called swipe dating app uh i'm pretty sure swipe dating app discussion slash message with purpose book club and i'm really excited i'm getting a lot of content together and my whole goal for that facebook group is to just i want to create a dialogue between men and women who use swipe dating apps um so we can all kind of support each other so we can all learn how to be more creative and communicate better um and i'm going to be posting some like example conversations i've had in there good ones um, and bad ones, just just so people, you know, some I can provide analysis, and we can all comment on it, and we can all learn together. Well, Michael, I want to thank you once again for being on the show, and I wish you all the best in your author journey ahead. Thanks, Paul, man. Have a good one. Thanks again for joining us today. To learn more about how you can be featured in our brand new Get Published business book, go to getpublishedpodcast.com. Thank you.